Welcome back Marauders. This is video 9.2, Absolute Entropy and Entropy Change. In our last video, we learned what entropy is. Entropy is disorder or randomness in a system. And we learned how to predict the sign of an entropy change during a chemical reaction. So if you look at the reactants in the products, we were able to predict would delta S be positive or negative? Would it, would it become more ordered or more disordered? And in this section, we're gonna learn how to calculate an actual numerical value for delta S. So in order to do that, we know that the entropy change of a reaction is the difference between the absolute entropy of the products and the absolute entropy of the reactants. We did something similar with enthalpy. Uh, entropy, just like enthalpy, is a state function, meaning it doesn't matter what path you take, you just need to know the difference between where you started with your reactants and where the products end up, and that change from the reactants to the products gives us the change. Uh, and so here's a graph showing the entropy of solids, liquids, and gases. We know that as you go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you increase the entropy. And if we know where we're starting, say you started a solid right here at this temperature, and at the end you had a gas at this temperature, uh, that difference between the entropy here at your solid and here for your gas, that'd be the overall entropy change for the reaction. Uh, so there are a list of standard molar entropies that you can look up. Uh, it's in tables. In our book, it'll be right next to the enthalpy change, the delta H values that we've already seen. And a couple things you'll notice that these are all greater than zero. So everything has disorder. Everything with a temperature above absolute zero is going to have some amount of disorder. So in that way, it's unlike the delta H's. When we looked up the standard enthalpies of formation, the delta H standard of formation, uh, we saw that those would be zero if it was just an element in its standard state. That's not true for the entropies. Even an element in its standard state will still have a, uh, entropy that is, a standard molar entropy that's greater than zero. And so you can see that for things like uh, carbon or oxygen or nitrogen, Okay, these things all have entropies that are not zero. Uh, they would have enthalpies of formation, delta H formation of zero, but for entropy, they're not zero. Uh, the other thing we can notice looking at these values is that they're higher for gases than solids or liquids. That makes sense. We talked in our last video about how gases have the highest entropy. Uh, and so if we look here at water, here's water as a liquid, there's its value. And you can see it's significantly higher for water as a gas. So we have a much bigger value for water as a gas because there's a lot more disorder, a lot more randomness, a higher entropy for water as a gas than as a liquid. Uh, other things we might notice is that entropy is usually higher for compounds that have a higher molar mass. So if we compare a couple of these hydrocarbons over here, uh, like CH4 and then moving up to C2H6 and C3H8, that's an increase in molar mass. Uh, you've got more carbons and more hydrogens, and you'll see that we have an increase in the disorder, increase in the uh, entropy. Uh, and you'll also see that there's usually an increase in entropy with the number of atoms in a molecule. So along with the molar mass increasing there, you also have increasing number of atoms making up each one of those molecules, and that's another part of the reason that you see an increase in the uh, standard molar entropy of those compounds. And so if we use this equation, we can find the entropy change of a reaction at standard conditions. And so for the reaction, it's going to be equal to the sum of the entropy, standard molar entropies of all your products minus the sum of all your standard molar entropies of your reactants. And so here's an example right here that we want to find the entropy change for. And we have our table of standard values down here. Uh, and so we'll take the delta S of the reaction will be equal to the sum of all of our products. So our products are three moles of carbon dioxide. So we'll go three times the value for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is right here, 213.7. 213.7 plus our other product is four moles of water. 
So the water, we gotta make sure with the water that we're looking for the one that's a gas, that'll make a big difference. So the gas is 188.8, 188.8. And those are our products. And then minus the sum of the entropy changes of our reactants. So our reactants are the C3H8. C3H8 is right here with 269.9. And then plus our five moles of oxygen. So remember the oxygen, even though it's an element in its standard state, it's not enthalpy, but entropy value, so it does have a value. We need to find it, it's not gonna just be zero, it's 205.1. And we calculate this, and this I believe comes out to be uh, positive 98.8, and the units uh, are gonna be joules per degree Kelvin. So here are the units of the standard molar entropies that we looked up. The moles will cancel out when we multiply it by the moles of each reactant or product. And then the units that we get at the end will be joules per degree Kelvin. Uh, it's positive. Uh, that means it's an increase in entropy as we go from the reactants to the products. Uh, we probably could have predicted that. So if we look at our reactants, we have one and five. So we have six moles of gas on this side. On our product side, we have three and four, so we have seven moles of gas. And typically, when we see an increase in the number of moles of gas, that's an increase in entropy. And when we actually calculate it using the values, we confirm that it was a positive value. It was an increase in entropy.